Welcome, I'm David Droz, Senior Analyst here at AgChief, and every month I like to put on this monthly outlook. It helps us to take a look at the markets to see where they've been, where we are today, and more importantly, where the markets are going to move here over, the say, the next 30 days. I always like to give you the Coles Notes version when I start here. Uh, basically, in the last uh, outlook here, just over a month ago, we were anticipating the seasonal downturn into this time of the year prior to the spring rally. You'll be glad to hear that it looks like we have seen some seasonal lows put in place in some of the markets here and looks like uh, the market is about to start to turn back up. Taking a look here at the first slide, this is the May Canola Futures uh, contract and just taking a look back here in time, back on December 15th, we had made a recommendation to sell old crop canola in anticipation of a downturn. Uh, giving you know forecasts for that 475, 480 area as a seasonal low. Here on April 3rd, we did see that seasonal low come in at 475. It was an intraday low. Market you know rallied up off of that low that day, which is a good sign that the market is not likely to go back to test that low anytime soon. Now that we're starting to move higher here, first area of resistance is going to come in in that 513 area. Taking a look at the next slide, this is November canola futures contract. Similar here, uh, we made a recommendation to sell new crop canola on March the 2nd based on what we saw in the marketplace as a harami on the candlestick chart, which is a sell signal, and the market has since moved lower. Here again, market joined all the way down to test an old low at 472, which is often support, and it, on that day it started lower, gapped lower, came back, created what's called an oops, which is a buy signal or a reversal pattern indicating you're going back up, and the market has indeed moved up here now to that 486 area or so. Uh, it's important here for this market to get above that first area of resistance at 486 before it continue on to the next area of resistance at 500. Taking a look at the next slide, this is the May soybean contract. Uh, here again, a harami developed here on January the 19th. We went ahead on January 20th, making a recommendation to sell soybeans in anticipation of a downturn. Market has moved lower, breaking a steep uptrending line of support along the way and continuing to move lower. Uh, you know, we did give a forecast here for the nearby soybeans to move down into that 935 area for a seasonal low. That was achieved here on April the 11th and here again markets starting to move back up from that low so therefore we do anticipate that the low is behind us and the market is about to turn back up. Looking for a bounce in here. Uh, first area that the market should have trouble uh, once it gets there is that 985 to 1010 area. Taking a look at the next slide. This is November soybean contract here again, we saw a reversal pattern referred to as a harami, indicating a sell signal or reversal pattern. That was on January the 20th. Here again, we made a recommendation to sell this time new crop soybeans based on that. Prices were up at uh, resistance, technically overbought and vulnerable to turn down. Prices did then move down below the steep uptrending line of support and continued lower. Got down into that 940 area here this week, starting to turn back up. Here on this chart, we're looking for it to bounce into that $9.90 to $10 a bushel area. Taking a look here at the next slide, this is the May uh, Oat Futures contract. Here we saw a uh, tweezer top up at the high here in that 255 area. Market then turned down, got all the way down to 215 here, an old low. Uh, that's often an area of support. Created a reversal called a two-day reversal and starting to move higher. On this bounce, the first area of resistance that Oat's going to have trouble exceeding is that 235 area. Prior to the downturn here, back on January the 20th, we actually made a recommendation to sell old and new crop oats up at that level prior to the downturn. Taking a look here at the next slide, this is the cash oat chart going back to 2013. Here you can see that on this rally, oats moved up to a three and a half year high and then started to turn back down and has been under pressure since turning down in that January 20th period. For oats here, you know, we've lowered our sights on how high to target on the next bounce. We've lowered our sights here by 15 cents a bushel on this go around. Taking a look at the next slide, this here is the red spring wheat, number one 13.5 cash chart. Prices for spring wheat have been supported by demand for protein relative to the winter wheats. And here on this slide, you can see that for the last couple of years, 
once wheat prices get up into that 650 to $7 range, they often uh, come into resistance and turn back down. Given the supply of wheat in the world, we don't anticipate higher prices than that. The 650 or a little bit higher would be in Saskatchewan, and the $7 area-ish would be in Alberta or Manitoba. Continue to target that range to price uh, spring wheat. Here at AgChief, uh, if you've been following your advice, uh, we're 100% sold on spring wheat. Taking a look here at the next slide. Uh, just looking at the factors that are affecting grain and oilseed markets right now, supportive to prices is the weak Canadian dollar and strong demand. Limiting the upside price potential is a record soybean crop in South America, weak euro, strong US dollar, and more than adequate global supply of wheat, corn, and soybeans. Wild cards out there is the Northern Hemisphere crop prospects and US President Donald Trump's administration's trade policies. Taking a look at the next slide, this is just giving some of the highlights here, summarizing our strategy. Uh, we've got strong demand here, offsetting record production. There is that seasonality for the grain and oil seed markets to have a spring rally following the seasonal downturn in February, March. In canola, continue to target the $11.50 to $12 area for old, old crop and $10.80 to $11 for new crop. For spring wheat, target that $6.50 to $7 area for both old and new crop. And soybeans target the $11.50 to $12 area for both old and new crop as well. Oats targeting $260 to $285 in Saskatchewan, $285 to $310 in Alberta, and $310 to $335 in Manitoba for both old and new crop oats. In summary here, I just want to say that we are looking for a seasonal rally here. Just to take it day by day to see how high the market may go. We'll keep you posted on that. We'll come up with further recommendations on when to pull the trigger again. If you do have questions or comments about today's market outlook, or you would like to talk to us about the markets, you can text us here at 204-510-5578, or give us a call at 888 274-3138. Our experienced advisors will be more than glad to help you out.